I think we'll start with the main part, which is the supply. So this is the first part we've talked about. We've talked about in this session about two or three important areas. We've talked about the general navy and its classification as interstate and interstate. We've thereafter gone into the concept of uh, supply as being distinct from the current concepts of manufacture and uh, sale and uh, services. We then went into the concept of taxable person and inclusions and exclusions. With that background, we now go into the main part. We always said GST applies on supplies. So what is supply? I think that's the most important aspect. What is meant by supply? If you want to tax something, if you want to tax a service, there's a definition of service. If you want to tax sale, there's a definition of sale. So what is the definition of supply? Let's see. Question. Section 3 was, supply includes all forms of supply of goods and or services such as sale, transfer, barter, exchange, license, rental, lease or disposal made or agreed to be made for a consideration by a person in the course or furtherance of business. Importation of service whether or not for a consideration and whether or not in the course of furtherance of business and a supply specified in schedule 1 made or agreed to be made without a consideration. So this is the definition of supply and this is where I have the largest complaint of the term. It's a very funny way of doing it. What is supply? Supply includes the supply. What, where do I reach? Supply includes all forms of supply. Is that a definition? And this is a charging provision. This is what will decide whether I am in the law or outside the law. And then you are saying supply includes all forms of supply. So what are you telling me? You are not telling me anything. Frankly, you are not telling me anything. Right? Sale means transfer of title in goods. That is the definition. Service means an activity carried out for a consideration. Service means service cannot be a definition. Service includes service cannot be a definition. But here we have supply includes all forms of supply. Does not lead me anywhere, but where this is the definition. And let's read it. It says, supply includes all forms of supply of goods and or services. And then they include such as sale, transfer, barter. Just think about, I have many service providers here. Just think about any of these words applies to you or not. From a service sector. Is service sold? Is service transferred? Barter? Exchange, licensed, rental, lease, disposed. What do you do for service? Is, is a training program like this covered within this such as? Are services sold, transferred, etc., or are services provided or rendered? So if you look at the current service tax law, we have services provided. Earlier, we now use the word services rendered. You can use the word services performed. Either of those three words could have been fine. But looking at the way it is drafted, I wouldn't be surprised. Of course, it needs a lot of courage. But if this definition sails through, maybe two decades later, because that's the time frame which the Supreme Court takes, the Supreme Court might say that GST law applies only to goods. It does not apply to <laughs> Because there is an interpretation that when you have a charging provision, this is the charging provision, this is the core of your GST law. It has to be interpreted strictly. There cannot be loose ends to it. And when you interpret it strictly, what gives in this definition a comfort to say that services are covered? There is nothing in this definition in clause A which says services can get covered. Again, a very loose, unthought of drafting. Perhaps we will get amended when the final law comes. But yes, this is one point which I just thought I'll highlight. But yes, sub clause A. So we have three structures here A, B, and C. A and C are basically generic things, and B is import. So B is a little bit different. Ideally, I would have liked A and C to be together and then B, but this is the way it is. We are told A is all forms of supply made for a consideration. So A is safe, it still requires, still goes something like a VAT and service tax rate. Consideration is a must, you can't deviate from consideration. If you want to fit me in, up to that, 
I'm very happy because that's the right way to do it. Then we have C, which says supply specified in Schedule 1, which is we we'll talk about in a few minutes, made or agreed to be made without a consideration. So when you go to C, consideration is secondary. That's why we had that slide which said that supply may need duality, but it may not need consideration. So if you are in C, the items which are listed in Schedule 1, there is no need for a consideration. Even free supplies would become taxable so long as they are mentioned in your schedules. B is a bit of a different name. We are talking about importation of services. If you are importing, whether or not for a consideration. So this covers both situations where you pay for an import of service or you do not pay for it. It's a free service. And whether or not in the course of furtherance of business a very potentially lethal weapon in the government. We don't know where this will lead to. We have an audience of around 100 plus people here. Are you importers of services? I'm not talking about your representing a company, but at an individual level? Yes. yes. What do you import? Online rating, education. Yes. <coughs> Everybody uses a mobile and has 50 apps on his mobile. Each of these app is downloaded. Maybe 30 of them are Indians, 20 of them are foreigners. The foreigner has supplied you a service, software is a service, supplied you a service free of cost. You have imported a service at an individual level. Every time you go to Google to do a project work for your child, you are importing a service. Every time you go to Wikipedia, you are importing a service. And this does not require consideration it does not require a business intent. Those go to administer it. And this was one important point when I had a meeting with the uh, senior minister. One important point which I was highlighting was do we have the wherewithal? Today, we have central excise and service tax number of assesses in the country is around 9 lakhs. If GST gets implemented, the central government will be administering at least 2 crore SSS. We are not even talking about these type of stupid examples of a housewife importing something for her child. The existing dealer network of all the 30 states aggregated together is around 2 crores. Are we geared infrastructurally and physically to handle this huge of volume? Because initially when we were talking about GST, we were looking at at least a crore of rupees of a threshold. That has now gone down to 10 lakhs and that too at an aggregate level, which is really nothing. That's a big difference which will impact everyone. Is that the intent of the law? Is that the intent to tax the old drafting? Intent is not there, but if you read this, it's a wrong drafting. It's a wrong drafting. It's an unthoughtful drafting. And there are many places, because I have been a part of the group, I know the intent is very noble. But problem is there is a concept of a senior minister and bureaucrats who always have good intentions. I would not even doubt their intentions. But when it comes down to the last level superintendent, we have seen SOPOS notices which are hilarious to say the least. We have seen a SOPOS notice on a municipal corporation who demolishes an unauthorized structure. Okay. And the principal corporation is asked and they charge a penalty because you have done an unauthorized construction. So they will come and demolish it and they charge you a penalty. So the SOCOS notice, the department comes back and says that look principal corporation, you have provided a demolition service to the citizen. So please pay me a service tax. And you are like one of the chores of the country, one government officer saying this to another government officer. And you intended not to pay this tax, so I slap you a penalty. That is where the ultimately it's going to be how it's going to be implemented by the last leg, the superintendent, the inspectors, and the officers who are very, very creative. <laughs> so intentions are good, but it has to come in the draft. If it does not come in the drafting, you have a potential for disaster. Is this one more question? Sure. Uh, Mr. Hansi, intent is the college dedicate something to India for business meetings or yes. just a you know, initial talks on the potential business would get power. Yes, it could be an important service. So we have a detailed, uh, yesterday we were discussing with one MNC, 
the head office does so many things for the subsidiary. And loss of it is not even documented in a transfer pricing report. Yeah, so something like this, you know, someone might just come and say, want to just assess the potential of the country. So that again is a service given to the subsidiary in India. The subsidiary in India has imported a service for which there is no consideration. So identify an offshore consideration like what you do in transfer pricing and pay a GST on that. Because importation of service, whether or not, for a consideration. So that's very really wide. There is a duality of persons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's the concern. So yes, it's very very wide. And uh, then you go to this deemed supply. Maybe you can just bring it up. Schedule one deemed supplies, permanent transfer or disposal of business assets, temporary application of business assets to a private or non-business use, services put to a private or non-business use, assets retained after deregistration. Supply of goods and or services by a taxable person to another taxable or non-taxable person in the course or furtherance of business. However, supply of goods by a registered taxable person to a job worker in terms of section 43A shall not be treated as supply of goods. So others are fine, but I think the last bullet point is a brain uh, storm of lots of controversies. Others are specific types of activities, so we will not go into detail. But the last one. Supply of goods and or services by a taxable person to another taxable or not taxable person in the course of furtherance of business is deemed supply even if there is no consideration. Now, two aspects to this. Of course, they said that removals to job workers and re removals from the job worker to the principal manufacturer will not be deemed to be supply, which is good. It's something similar to what Excise also has today, which is being sought to be continued in the future. But let's first not look at job work scenario, let's look at the last bullet point and read that and try to read up later. Supply of goods and or services by a taxable person to another taxable or a non-taxable person. So I would believe that this would still require a duality of persons. And despite duality of persons, this according to me is very, very mild. And you can have so many situations and you just try to bring out few examples of cases which would get fitted. So you have situations of supply of assets to employees and we said employee to employer there is no tax. But essentially when you say supply by a taxable person to another taxable or non-taxable person, any transaction, any facility, any asset or a service flowing from the company to the employee will be deemed to be a supply by the company to the employee. For example, most of the companies are a canteen facility, which is given free. As of today, no concerns on that. Moving forward, it will be a service or a supply given by the company to its employees. Employee is a distinct taxable person, non taxable person. And company is a separate taxable person. And therefore, this schedule will cover a situation of a supply of canteen services by the company to them. And GST will be able Company giving laptops to an employee for use. Temporary application of assets is also a supply. Residential house, they give furnishings, soft furnishing purposes because there's a benefit. All of these announcements are there. Motor cars given to senior employees. All of these would be supplies given by the company to the employee, and the company would be obliged to discharge a GST on each of these. Again, a very big issue by itself. Free issue of materials, many a times there are various free schemes which are floated. Companies give free materials to clients, business promotion, gifts which are given. Diwali time many gifts float around, Christmas time floats around. What important thing, clients, you send them birthday gifts. All of that will be a subject matter of a deemed supply. And all of these you will have to have emotional valuation and discharge a GST on each of these. So long as goods is concerned, it is still tangible, so it is easy to define. But in services, it is going to be a pain. Like the example which we just took, a foreign delegate or a representative of a foreign company coming, maybe Indian companies, two Indian companies, you have group companies, a common director working for 10 group companies, so some big companies, some small companies. That common director is working for all of them. 
So there's a supply of service by the company where it is a director to the other group companies. Some larger companies create a cost sharing arrangement for this. But not all of them would have a structured cost sharing arrangement. If there is no good cost sharing arrangement in place, you might end up with the officer coming and saying that, look, you have given me a card, are you an employee of this company? Give us a subsidiary tax assessment is happening. And subsidiary has no employee. Most of the construction companies work on an SPV concept. So all the SPVs don't have employees. It's only the parent company which has an employee. And that tax officer, tax manager will handle the assessments for all the 20, 30 SPVs. When he goes for the tax hearing, he will say, look Mr. X, are you an employee of this XYZ limited? He says, no, I am an employee of the parent. Is there a cross charge? If there is no cross charge, it is a free supply of your service to the subsidiary and there will be a GST exposure on that. So, you can't bring the concepts of goods into services everywhere. Because there is so much of intangibility to services and when we dilute it and say that yes, all of this without consideration will be taxed, you have a recipe for disaster, a recipe for subjectivity on this one. 